In today's episode of this show, I'm going to go over the top 10 things I do to reduce my stress as a law firm owner and lawyer. Welcome to the Josh Gerben Show, because law school didn't teach business. Stress is the number one thing that most lawyers do not have under control in their lives. And after the last 16 years of running a law firm, I've developed really good strategies for dealing with stress. And today I'm going to share with you my top 10. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the show. Before we get started today, I just would like to invite you to shoot me an email if you have any questions at all about the business side of running a law firm or just the business side of being a lawyer if you don't have your own law firm. I sometimes use these questions to get future show topics, and I'm more than happy to start a conversation with you just to talk shop. My email address is josh at joshgerbin.com. Again, just shoot me a note, josh at joshgerbin.com. Promise I'll respond. So in today's episode, we're going to talk about stress. And the reason I want to talk about this is that most lawyers I know and talk to do not have stress under control in their lives. I hear about their daily routines and I hear about what they're doing on a day-to-day basis. And I'm like, oh my God, you have not stopped and stepped back and look at how you can manage your day better, how you can manage your life better, and just be less stressed. Because at the end of the day, if you're going to be a lawyer and you're going to make a career out of it, you've got to last for like 30 plus years, right? I mean, we're not building businesses and selling uh, you know, unicorns and just going off and retiring at the age of 50. So you've got to really be able to make it through the better part of your life being a lawyer. And the more you can control the stress, the healthier you're going to be, the healthier you are, the more you're going to be able to be there for your clients and of course, for your family. So I think it's so incredibly important to get stress under control. I'm going to go over my top 10 ways that I do it. And I, I tinker with this all the time. So I started really paying attention to this during the pandemic. Um, I just found myself way too stressed out for obvious reasons. And as I paid more and more attention to my own personal stress levels, I've developed much better techniques for dealing with them to the point where I feel really good about it today. I'm always a work in progress, but these are the things that I do uh, to just feel good on a daily basis and and not get overwhelmed, not get stressed out. All right. So these come to you in no particular order. Uh, but the first tip on how to reduce stress is to take large breaks during the workday. And this idea came to me from reading a book about meditation, which talked about how if you can really break away from work in the middle of the day for a while, and I'm talking about at least an hour, sometimes two hours, it resets your stress levels and stress hormones. And instead of just ramping up your stress all day long by dealing with work and client demands and opposing counsel and all these things, if you reset your stress levels, it does wonders for you at the end of the day when it's time to go to bed, when it's time to get some rest. You know, you're know, giving that internal stress hormone a break in the middle of the day and it comes back and it even helps you at the end of the day, right? So what I have done is I structure my workouts and when I exercise, because exercise, as I don't even put it on this list because it's, it, it's a given, you have to exercise. You can't not exercise. So I do my workouts from typically 11, 11.30 to one o'clock every single day. That's an hour and a half to sometimes two hour break to go lift weights, do cardio, whatever it is I'm going to do that day. Um, And by having that midday reset, it's amazing what that does for the the rest of my day productivity wise, because now I've gotten a really good break, some physical activity, and I can come back and just just go ball out the rest of the afternoon. Um, But by the end of the day, I've already gotten my workout in, I've already got that stress relief in. And I feel so good at the end of the day still from that. So again, not everybody's going to maybe be able to break from 11 to 1, but you, you, should fi- you should find times to make a break in the middle of the day. And so if you're a morning workout person, you do your morning workout from 7 to 8 or 7 to 9, you still need to find a break in the day. So if it's not going to be a workout, it could be a meditation, it could be a really long walk outside. You have to have a break from the work during that work day. Just really, really critical from a scientific perspective on how that works with your body. My second tip on how to reduce stress is to get rid of as many Zoom calls as you possibly can. There is nothing more soul-sucking than sitting in a chair, talking to somebody over a video chat for a long period of time. Every single one of these calls I leave and I feel absolutely exhausted. Physically, just my eyes, it just doesn't feel good, right? And so what I do is I apologize in advance people, but I will try very hard to take most of my phone calls on a regular phone. 
And when I'm doing that, I'm doing one of two things. One, I'm either getting stretches in because I'm a very stiff person. I just have stiff hamstrings. I, I need to stretch every day. So I can easily spend a half an hour call and be on the floor stretching the entire time. Or if it's nice enough outside, I'll go for a walk and I'll just walk and talk. And that low um, cardio there, and you know, you can end up walking for a mile, just having that 30 minute call. And you just end up the call and you're ready to get back in the email because you haven't been in the chair for the last 30 minutes. You haven't been staring at a screen for the last 30 minutes. So I get that some Zoom calls are necessary with clients because it helps build a little bit of rapport. Um, but boy, if you can avoid, you know, especially if it's calls with people that aren't clients and things of that nature, get off of Zoom as much as possible. And even I'll apologize to clients. I'll say, hey, look, I'm out of the office right now. I'm just going to jump on a call as opposed to the video. And nine times out of 10, it really doesn't matter. So I just really encourage you to rethink Zoom and rethink your use of it. It's just soul psych. My third tip on how to reduce stress revolves around money. Because ultimately, if you're, if you're running your own law firm, worrying about money is probably the number one thing you do. And granted, this gets easier with time. But I really try not to worry about money. I don't worry about how, what are the exact dollars I'm going to make this year? Now, I get into that position because I've been working for 16 years and I'm not living paycheck to paycheck. And I have the ability to say, okay, if we have to take a loss somewhere, we take it. I make less money this month. It just doesn't affect my daily life. I'm working for the long run, right? I'm working for the 10 or the 20 years and the amount of money I'll make over that time for my kids and their college or retirement or whatever it is. But day to day, I live very much within my means. I don't, I don't worry about you know, so you have to obviously, A, you live within your means. I mean, that goes without saying, but you really shouldn't worry too much about money because if you take a big loss, let's say last year, for example, I took a $30,000 loss. It hurt. We had a client, long, long-standing uh, client of the firm. You know, they started to get behind on their bills. I said, ah, that's weird. And didn't really say much to them. Thought maybe they would mention it if it was a problem. We got about six months out and they started to tell me they're having financial trouble. Well, by that point, they owed us like $30,000. And- it was pretty clear we weren't going to get it, recover it. So no, I'm, I, obviously I'm not going to sue a client. That's just not what we do. Um, I, what am I going to say? They say they can't pay their bill. I obviously let them know that hurts, but you know we'll wait and hopefully they can figure it out. Um, but I don't anticipate seeing that money. And you know, thirty thousand dollars obviously a lot of money. And so, you know, was I worried about it? No, because I knew that if I spent any time worrying about it. I wouldn't spend time with the clients that were paying us. I wouldn't spend time developing clients that could that I could bring in to make up for that loss. And so as long as I didn't lose any more time to that, I was going to be fine because I could go out there and run and I could make that back. And yeah, I mean, it would be nice to get paid, right? It would be nice to get that money back. But at the end of the day, it really didn't make a difference. Matter of fact, we had a better year profit-wise last year, even with that kind of loss than we've ever had before. And it's because I didn't get distracted. It's because I didn't let myself get stressed out. I didn't lose days to just worrying about that big number. You, it just doesn't do anybody any good. And um, you really have to get to the place where you're not worried about every last dollar. Now you have to. You can't obviously have everybody not pay you, but you need to have systems in place to make sure you're getting paid on time. And don't be like me. Don't let a client go 90 days and don't pay you. But uh, if it does happen, because it's going to happen if you're in business for long enough, someone's going to stiff you on a bill really just can't worry about. Move on, find clients that will pay you, and you'll never notice the loss. All right, this next tip I call curate the content that you consume. This is something I learned during the pandemic and uh, with all the pol political upheaval we've had in the last few years. My Twitter feed or my social media feeds would be full of sort of negativity, right? Oh, this side's doing that, that side's doing that. How awful is this person? And what I found is it was filling my mind with all these like negative emotions and feelings. And why why was I doing that to myself? It doesn't affect anything about my daily life. My daily life is taking care of a family, taking care of my employees, running a business. That stuff is so out there and I don't need to be worried about it on a, on a minute by minute basis, right? I should know what's going on in the world, but I don't need to be worrying about it all the time. So I got rid of everybody in my Twitter feed and other social media feeds that were posting anything negative. You posted something negative, I unfollowed you, I blocked you, whatever it was. And that could be anybody from a news reporter to somebody I just followed randomly. And, and the reason is it's really important that you think about with all the information that's out there, which is essentially limitless these days, that you're curating what you're putting in your mind because you would be surprised the baseline stress you cause for yourself when you intake information that's negative or argumentative and all these other things. You know, you shouldn't be jumping on the social media 
as a lot of us will do it as a break, right? You might be like, ah, I'm so tired of this case. I'm just going to go check on Twitter and do mindless stuff. But that mindless stuff ends up adding stress. It, it's no good. It's just no good. So curate the content you allow yourself to intake. It is incredibly important to reducing stress and only allow yourself self to really read anything stressful or view something stressful um, within, you know, typically the early part of the day, if you want to read the news and you want to be aware of what's going on, but have a black, black out all that stuff after a certain hour. And I, I'll be honest with you, I go days without even reading the news anymore. It's just too negative all the time. And so, um, I just think it gives you, you'd be surprised how much ignorance is truly bliss in a certain way. And there's only certain things you should really be involved in on a day-to-day -day basis from a news perspective, anyhow. And there's just too much information out there. We're not we're not evolved to deal with that and deal with all that stress. Our, our minds are not evolved to deal with that. So really keep that in mind as to what you're exposing yourself to on a day-to-day -day basis. And for God's sakes, do not go on social media after dinner. Just not worth it. There's nothing good on social media <laughs> that you should be reading as you get into the later part of your day. Um, just leave it alone. Just take the apps off your phone if you have to. So my next tip is that I do not read new emails after 7 p.m. And that's because a new email could contain upsetting information. It could be a client that's mad at us about something. Uh, it could be an opposing counsel sending a really annoying email. You know, it could be all those things. And I don't want that to come into my world at the end of the day when maybe I can't fix the problem. You know, typically if a client's upset about something, it's nothing we did and they just misunderstood or they're, you know, a little bit difficult about something. And I can normally give them a call and smooth it right over. But if it's at the end of the day, I might not be able to call and reach them. So, I don't, I don't want to read that stuff at night. I want to deal with that the next morning when I got the whole day in front of me to deal with the problem. Um, now, I work late into the night sometimes. I might work till 9, 9.30 at night, um, but I'm only working on things that I've reviewed earlier in the day and I know I need to get back to and get an email out. So it's all clear stuff, right? It's nothing that's going to upset me or you know trigger me in any way. Um, and that's really important because you don't want to get all upset at night and not be able to deal with the problem and then have to go to bed. It just doesn't work well for stress. It doesn't work well for rest. And so really think about during the day, oh, if I'm going to, I have two hour block tonight, I'm going to work. Let me leave this for later because I reviewed it. I know it has to get done. It's not upsetting work and I can just get it done tonight, knock it out and then just deal with other stuff during the day that might be a little bit more stressful. Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying today's episode of the Josh Gerben Show. This show is brought to you by none other than Gerben IP. Gerben IP is a trademark copyright and patent firm based out of Washington, D.C., We've been in business for more than 16 years and work with clients from all over the United States and the world. If you are a U.S.-based attorney, please know that we do accept referrals from attorneys and pay a 20% referral fee for the lifetime of a client that you refer to us. We work really well with firms that don't do IP work, but need to plug in someone that does for their clients, especially someone that's not going to do the other work that you're already doing. Uh, so if you need somebody to refer your IP work to, please feel free to reach out to me. My email address is jgerben at gerbenlawfirm.com. Drop me a note. I'll be happy to schedule an appointment with you, talk about our referral program, talk about what we can do for your clients. Thanks again so much for listening. Now back to the show. My next tip is do not be reactive. This is a tip that comes from meditation if you've ever meditated. And if you haven't meditated, you need to start because that's, that's basically stress relief 101 doesn't take long. You do like 15, 20 minutes a day. You can meditate. I don't even put it as a tip because I think, you, should, you know, it's just like the baseline stuff. Like you got to exercise, should be meditating, all these things that are obvious. I'm trying to give you the more non-obvious stuff. Not being reactive. What does that mean? That means not getting mad when something bad happens. I don't get mad at opposing counsel when they do something incredibly stupid. I don't get mad at opposing counsel when they potentially break an ethics rule to try to get at my client. I don't get mad at a client when they say, something really annoying or complain about something that they just is, they shouldn't be complaining about. My job is to handle problems. And if I'm going to get reactive and angry and mad or feel something really negative about every problem that comes across my plate, I'm going to have a lot of that emotion. And so if I'm less reactive to things, and I always don't think about, oh, well, if I could tell so-and-so how I felt, I never think about that anymore. Younger Josh would have been like, you know, I'll let you know how I feel, right? It would never helped anybody, never solved a problem. So what I focus on is if I have an issue that comes across my plate that somebody's done something stupid, somebody's complaining, whatever it is, my thing is, how do I solve this problem, right? I have to deal with this really tough opposing counsel. How are we going to solve that problem? I have to deal with this really you know, difficult client. How do we solve that problem? And 
when you come at it from that standpoint of, I'm not mad about this. I just, it, my job is to be the problem solver. It totally takes all the zing out of it. And I really don't worry anymore about what's going on in a case, especially if opposing counsel is making arguments I don't agree with or doing something that's not really up on the up and up because there's nothing I'm going to say or do that's going to change anything besides solving the problem legally. Like, you know, what motion are we going to write in response to this? What legal strategy are we going to do? How are we going to deal with this? What is what is the right outcome here? And when you don't take it at that personal level and you deal with it at that problem solving level and you're not reactive, again, keeping that stress hormone down, keeping those feelings of anger and everything else really just not letting them bubble to the surface, it's amazing what that does for your day. You know, so even if I get an email that, you know, might have been upsetting to me in the past, now I'm like, okay, well, that's a problem I need to solve. And, you know, and I just put it on my list of problems to get to that day. And how do I solve? Um, being less reactive, being non-reactive to things. Um, it's just incredibly important if you're going to be a lawyer, because you're going to get problems every single day. So my next tip has to deal with health. I think there's two things that are really important to think about. Uh, about what you're putting into your body. Um, one, you should not be eating out at restaurants a lot. And two, you should not be drinking alcohol. And that goes into this this thing of watch. So basically the tip is watch what you put into your body. Because when you eat at restaurants, you would be surprised the amount of crap that's in your food. They put, they do tenderizers on meat, the preservatives, just the salt content, the butter content, the sugar content. Um, if you saw the numbers, you'd probably be like, oh my God. And so one of the things I discovered is during the pandemic, we ate at home a lot. And then when all of a sudden it came time to go back and eat at a restaurant, I would feel awful after eating at a restaurant. And I realized it's just because when I cook at home, I don't put anything in my food. I just, I might grill something. I might saute something. I might steam something, but I'm not adding a bunch of stuff to it that they put in at restaurants. So if you're eating restaurant food all the time, it's just so bad for you. I might eat at a restaurant twice a month. And yes, you're going to have friends. You're going to go on a date night with your spouse. I get all that. I'm not saying you're never going to eat at a restaurant, but you need to limit what you eat there. I need to be aware of what you're eating when you go out because it's just really, really bad for you. And if you get in the habit of really cooking for yourself and eating at home a lot, you'd be shocked, especially if you're not eating, don't eat the processed packaged foods. You're eating whole foods, you're making salads, you're making vegetables, all that good stuff. You'd be surprised if you go to a restaurant, then how you're going to feel. You're like, oh my God, I didn't realize. So really be careful about restaurant food. Alcohol, I know this is a tough one, especially for lawyers. Uh, that nightcap can be really nice after a stressful day. Uh, but science shows that alcohol disrupts sleep. It also shows that it actually causes rebound stress the next day. So if you have a drink tonight, tomorrow, you're going to have more stress hormones than you would have if you didn't. Um, I used to be an every night kind of guy that have a couple drinks really helped me out. Uh, now I have none. And I will tell you that it took a little while, probably took Honestly, it, it was a couple, it, it probably took about a year to get fully on board with this, where I didn't have the cravings uh, for a nightly nightcap. But now I don't have any cravings and um, I've never had an alcoholic or anything, just a couple drinks a night and it never really affected anything, but it would, but I realized it just wasn't a good health move for me. And I realized I wanted to be better sleeper. I wanted to feel better the next morning. I wanted to feel better the next day. And if I didn't drink, all those things happened. And so I just really encourage people you have to look at what it is and you have to understand it's essentially a poison you're putting in your body. Um, out, that's what alcohol is and you need to stop drinking. Um, and if you do and you really are good at it and you replace a nightly nightcap with a chamomile tea, um, do that for three months and tell me how you feel. I think you would be shocked. The stress in your life, again, you think of alcohol as a stress reliever, it is not. It causes more stress hormones in your body the next day takes a while for this to all even out. But if you go three months, talk to me. Um, you'd be surprised. By the way, you also, I dropped like 10 pounds like overnight when I stopped drinking. So um, a lot of health benefits there. All right, one more tip on the health front, and this is go to bed an hour earlier than you currently do. Um, one of the hardest things that we have is getting enough rest, I think, in our society. And it's also the foundation for how you're going to do the next day in managing your stress. If you're rested, you're more able to deal with all the problems that are going to come up. Uh, I am guilty as anybody of being at the end of the day, turning on Netflix, being like, ah, I get to watch a show. I get to be entertained. I don't have to do anything. This is so nice. And the next thing I know, it's 1130. And I'm like, oh, crap, I got to get to bed. And now I'm all kind of wired from watching the show. And it's, you know, no wind down time from that. Um, nowadays, what I do, I read a book. Um, you know, typically my rule is I need to put everything down by 930 work wise. 
I might putz around for a few minutes just to get the house cleaned up because I got four kids. I had to clean up. Everybody's finally asleep. And uh, then I'll start reading and I'll read or, you know, if, if, if I don't want to read that night, I might call, you know, or I might use that time to talk to a family member. I might call my parents, I might call my brother um, just to kind of talk. Um, but I'll normally sit in a dark room. So, you know, you think about how we evolved and our, our eyes are very sensitive to light. So you don't want to be in front of lights or in a bright room at night. You want to be in a dark room. You want to be in a, you know, and so I'll look, I'll sit in a dark room. I'll look outside the night sky. I'll read. I have a book, book lamp I'll read by. Um, I might, if I'm talking to somebody, there's no lights on. The idea is you just want to get your body accustomed to the time that, Hey, it's time to wind down. It is nighttime. And if you play into all those things that our body is programmed to do, you'd be surprised. Okay, great. And, I, and every night I say, okay, at 1030, I gotta, I gotta be how on it upstairs. Right. And so basically have little alarms for yourself. Like I, I this is the time I'm going to get myself into bed. And um, I'm not going to let myself stay up and watch this show because I'm going to feel awful the next day. And as, as hard as that can be, once you start doing it, once you start getting the benefits of it, it's addicting. Like you're just like, oh, OK, yeah, I want to go to bed right now. And because uh, I know it'll help me feel better tomorrow. So get to bed earlier than you are. I promise you um, it'll be a good thing. All right. My next tip, getting back to some of the things we could do as, as a law firm, have extraordinarily high standards for your work product and your customer service. So why do I say this? Seems kind of obvious. You would be surprised how many lawyers do not have high standards for their work product and or do not understand what customer service really is. And if you have these really high standards, what happens is one, you have less upset clients and less problems because you're you're putting out really good work product and you're taking care of people because if people feel taken care of, you might even cover up work product that's not great. Um, if you're not doing those things, you have a lot more upset people and a lot more stress. So doing those things will eliminate a lot of stress in your life when you have those standards in place and you're actually executing on them. Uh, the other thing it does is if you have a problem, guess what? It's probably not you. <laughs> you know, the old saying is, it's not me, it's you, right? And look, I'm not saying we're not prone to mistakes, but the vast majority of times that something is, somebody's upset with us, it's because of who they are. It's not because of anything we did. Because if you look at the work we did and the customer service we provided, it was impeccable. Nobody would have done it better. And so I feel really good about that. I'm like, hey, look, I'll, I'll still deal with the problem. I'll try to make the, you know, you know, get the, get the clients or whoever's concerned resolved there. But I also know in my heart of hearts, we did nothing wrong. And actually we did better than almost anybody would have ever done for this person. So um, it really takes the stress out of the situation when you know you're in the right. And, and you just have to kind of show the other person that, or you have to do something a little extra just to make the person feel better. But if you're doing the right thing by somebody, first off, again, 95% of the time, we're not going to have problems. But when we do have problems, we're just not going to worry about them as much because we knew we did right. We didn't do anything wrong. And matter of fact, we went above and beyond. And that's going to come out if there would ever be any whatever complaint of any kind. And in, in this case, we're more likely to be able to satisfy the client because they've already been taken care of pretty well. And it just might be pushing it over you know, the hill or the hump for that particular client. But take good care of people. You'd be surprised. It's going to lower your stress level a lot. All right. My last tip is if all else fails, if all these things fail and you have a really stressful day, because even I do, you know, I'm sitting here telling you about how to manage stress. You could see, first off, look how dynamic stress can be. It comes at you from all different angles all day long. We haven't even gotten into how to deal with stress from your family, your spouse. I mean, that this is just work stress, right? So you're going to always have stress coming at you from all different angles. What do you do if you're just stressed out? Here's what I do. I go outside at night. I will literally lay on my front yard and I will look up at the sky. Um, there is something magical about just looking up at the night sky and seeing the stars. And you start to realize that if there's somebody else on one of those stars looking back at us, we just look like that little speck in the sky. We are so insignificant in the grand scheme of the universe. Now, this might be a little woo-woo for some of you out there, but I, I genuinely feel this way. Like it is every, every problem that each one of us has, it's insignificant. In a hundred years, it's not even going to matter on this planet, let alone in this universe. So just realize that, yes, while you have problems, they're relatively small in the grand scheme of things. They're going to resolve. Everything's going to be okay. And you're going to take care of it because you're good and you're going to take care of it. The problem's going to be fine. And we're just, we're just flying through the cosmos at whatever, you know, rotating around this sun and that we're, we're on this planet for such a short time. Just don't let your, your time here be, be overtaken by stress. So I hope this episode was helpful for you. Uh, you know, again, I, I, I'm constantly tinkering with how to make my life better. 
how to reduce my stress levels and enjoy every single day that I'm practicing law, running a law firm. Not always easy, but as you can see, you know, I've got a list of things I do, constantly adding or tinkering with it. So if you have any tips for how to reduce stress that you want to share, please in the comments or hit me up at my email address, which is just josh at joshgerbin.com. I would love to hear about how you're managing stress in your daily life and in your practice. Thanks again for joining us and I'll see you next time. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Before you take off, just a couple favors. First, if you're watching this on YouTube, can you leave us a thumbs up and a comment? When you do that, it helps other people find the videos. If you're listening to us on Apple or Spotify, leave a five-star rating and a review. Again, just helps others find the podcast and we really appreciate it. And finally, uh, just as a reminder, today's episode was sponsored by my law firm, Gerben IP. Uh, Gerben IP is a law firm that practices trademark, copyright, patent law, and we actually do offer referral fees to their lawyers. So if you have a case or you have a trademark problem that a client has, or the client just wants to get a trademark registered, feel free to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to talk to you about how our referral program and referral fees work, and we'll get your client taken care of really well. Thanks so much. I'll see you again next time.